Okay, so in this podcast, I want to go over how a thyroid function impacts your gallbladder and fat digestion. So one of the things to understand is that if you have hypothyroidism, um, the first question is, how long did it take for you to finally get diagnosed? So when you look at most people that have hypothyroidism, they don't have symptoms and immediately get the diagnosis. So that, that does happen, but it's pretty rare. What happens to most people is that they have symptoms of hypothyroidism, maybe their hair starts falling out, maybe they start getting constipation, maybe their hands uh, get really cold, they get poor circulation, they start getting fatigue, and over a period of time it gets worse and worse, and then they maybe go and tell their doctor, and their doctor checks everything, tells them it's okay, and then years and years go by before they finally get diagnosed with hypothyroidism because the symptoms are, are bad enough, or it took a while for them to find a clinician that could find their symptoms and know to run a thyroid test. But it usually takes some period of time where a person gets diagnosed with hypothyroidism, which means that there's been a period of time where that person has been in, in a low hypothyroid state. So, so what that means is, you know, there's a period of time when the body didn't have enough thyroid hormones circulating around for normal function. And that can lead to some problems. And one of the problems it can lead to is it can lead to the formation of gallstones and even what's called gallbladder sludge. And that can then have impacts in fat digestion and vitamin D levels and other health problems. So one of the things you have to understand is that thyroid hormones, one of their activities and their abilities to do is to, to bind to smooth muscles of the gallbladder and cause them to contract. So thyroid hormones are necessary to optimize gallbladder contraction. Now, your gallbladder has to contract in order to release bile. And um, if you've ever been in a state of hypothyroidism for, let's say, three, let's say a period of time, let's say it's three months or three years, but once it starts getting into many years, what happens is that gallbladder contraction becomes less efficient. So you can have a person who is in a hypothyroid state because they're not being diagnosed that they're hypothyroid, and then their gallbladder is not contracting. So bile that's produced by um, liver is stored in the gallbladder to help break down fats is basically there and it starts to thicken up and become sludge-like. It's kind of like a cement truck. A cement truck has to always be moving to stop that cement from starting to harden and stick together. Well, you kind of look at that same type of um, analogy to the gallbladder. The gallbladder has to have constant activation and contraction so that the bile that's stored in the gallbladder to digest fats isn't able to move around, be, be able to contract. So then it forms to what's called the sludge. And the gallbladder sludge is the first part before you develop gallstones. And gallbladder sludge will show up in a gallbladder ultrasound. And if the gallbladder is still not contracting well and there's metabolic mechanisms um, supporting bile st stasis, that things aren't moving and bile sticking together, it eventually that sludge will form into a gallstone. And then you can have gallstone issues because those gallbladder smooth muscle contractions haven't taken place. And this happens all the time in people that have hypothyroidism. So it's not uncommon for someone who has been in a hypothyroid state for long periods of time to eventually develop gallstones. Now, you should also know that when people have gallstone issues, it's typically you know more, more common in females. There's an estrogen component to it, um, body mass, insulin control. There's a lot of risk factors. I'll, I'll go over those risk factors with you in a second. But let's talk about what are the symptoms of gallbladder dysfunction and what happens when you start to have sludge, sludgy uh uh, bile, and then eventually gallstones. Well, the first thing you need to understand is don't confuse gallstone obstruction with just the formation of gallstones. So if someone has gallstones um, and have a, has a gallbladder attack, what's happening is that that gallstone is being released in the, the bile duct. So your gallbladder has a duct to release uh, bile, to help digest fats. So whenever you eat a fatty meal, your gallbladder contracts and that bile is released, it goes down a duct, and that uh, biliary duct connects with your intestines. So the bile that's released from the gallbladder can 
digest the fats that are now in your intestines. But if you have a gallstone, the gallstone can get stuck in that bile, in, in that bile duct, and that causes a, a lot of pain and a lot of symptoms, and that's when people have gallbladder attacks and gallstone attacks. That's actually an obstruction, okay? Now, most people that develop gallstones never actually have, um, you know, gallstone obstruction. What happens to them is they have this bile compound that's normally there to digest fats, which then all condenses together into a stone. So they have less available bile to break down fats. So when they eat something that's fatty, they can't digest it very well. So typically people that have gallbladder, gallstone issues, you know, they really can't handle greasy or, or high fat foods. Um, another common symptom is when people have gallbladder issues, they, if they have anything fatty, they end up burping. That's like a vagal response. They can't digest their fats or they're getting this burping response. It's very common to have people like have gallbladder issues. When they take fish oils, they start burping up fishy taste, fishy oils. Those are, those are all signs that's a gallbladder problem. And then also bile has an impact on changing stool color. So when people don't release enough bile, their stool color gets like clay colored. Um, it's a very light brown. Um, and those are all signs. So if you have like intolerance to fats, you eat anything greasy or fatty and you get bloating and distension right away, um, you have bitter, bitter metallic taste in your mouth, that's bile regurgitation. Those are all signs that your gallbladder not, may not be healthy. And that can be caused by being in a hypothyroid state for a period of time. So if you have these um, symptoms, one of the things that you need to know is that um, you may have a gallbladder issue. Now, if you've been hypothyroid, that increases your risk for developing these gallbladder issues. But I also want to go over with you what are the other risk factors? So when you start to combine risk factors together, uh, hypothyroidism being one of the risk factors, you can start to develop this sludgy uh, bile first called sludge, and then eventually the formation of gallstones. And then that sludge in gallstone is going to allow for less efficient bile release, so you can't digest fats as well. So b people that are overweight and obese have higher insulin levels. That tends to promote... Uh, gallstones. People who rapidly lose weight and then gain it again seems to be uh, a factor that promotes gallstones. Being sedentary tends to promote gallstones because actually when you move and exercise, you increase activity of your gastrointestinal motility and contraction and your gallbladder. So when you're sedentary, you have less intestinal activity as well. Diets really high in fat, diets that are really high in uh, cholesterol, diets low in fiber, um, People who take hormones, whether it's estrogens, progesterones, or all contraceptives, but primarily uh, reproductive hormones, uh, not thyroid hormones, they tend to have increased risk factors for gallstones. And then there's also non-modifiable risk factors, just being over 40 years of age, just being a female. It's more common in Native Americans, uh, Mexican Americans, and then having a family history of gallstones or diabetes all increases your risk. So if you already have a diet that's really high in fat and low fiber and are sedentary and have, let's say, early diabetes or on your way to diabetes and you've taken birth control pills, in combination with that, you've been hypothyroid for three or five years, you may just develop gallstones. <laughs> and as you develop gallstones, you start to have intolerance to fats and you'll have less, less bile release. Now, this is a problem because lots of other things happen when you release bile. So first of all, um, bile doesn't just digest fat. Bile has been shown to be a really active uh, immune signaling agent for the gastrointestinal microbiome. So there's basically receptors in the gut that um, are called G-coupled proteins and ferrocenoid X receptor pro receptors, and bile binds to them and as bile binds to those uh, receptors in the microbiome, they help control intestinal inflammation, they help with energy metabolism of the gut, and they help with activating biotransformation pathways so your gut bacteria can metabolize um, <clears throat> so-called toxic compounds that are in your gut, and they help modulate nutritional metabolism of your gut. So as you get gallstones and sludgy gallbladder, it's not just the fact that you're 
um, having problems digesting fats, you're actually throwing off your gastrointestinal physiology. And there's a lot of people that have chronic gastrointestinal issues where they're always bloated and they're always distended and they can never fix their leaky gut. They always have intestinal inflammation because they have a gallbladder issue and they're doing everything like treating their leaky gut and trying to take probiotics and none of those things are working. And uh, those things aren't going to work because you have to have healthy bile release to then activate receptors in the microbiome, which is a part of normal gallbladder function. And it's not just that bile is there to digest fats. The other key thing to understand is that bile release helps not only to break down fats, but it's involved with um, healthy absorption of essential nutrients. So all your fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin K, um, these uh, all can be uh, impacted when you don't have healthy gallbladder function and bowel release. So in order to absorb these fat-soluble vitamins, um, you have to have healthy bowel release. Now, typically when vitamin A deficiency starts to happen, people get really poor skin. Um, they start to get something called night blindness where they just can't see as well as night, and it's, it's not related to any kind of changes in their actual uh, pupil or cornea. Uh, vitamin D deficiencies start to happen. It's, it's not uncommon for people to have these gallbladder issues to constantly take high doses of vitamin D and never see their levels change. They get vitamin E deficiencies. That will really impact their hair quality, their skin, um, their nails. They get vitamin K deficiencies. Vitamin K will um, impact their ability to clot. Sometimes they get nosebleeds all the time that they, they can't resolve. Uh, vitamin K can also cause platelets to be low in blood tests. So these are all the different things that start to show up when these fat-soluble vitamins um, develop malabsorption because there isn't healthy bile release. So when you look at a gallbladder problem, it's, it's, it's really a big deal. The other key thing is when you eat healthy essential fatty acids, like if you, if you eat healthy oils like avocado oil or olive oil or you eat healthy fats like fish oils, in order for you to process those fats into essential fatty acids so you can optimize inflammation, your gallbladder has to release bile. So there becomes inefficient essential fatty acid metabolism. So when you really look at it, a, a sluggish gallbladder, gallbladder sludge is a really big deal because it really impacts your fat-soluble vitamin nutrient absorptions, your essential fatty acid nutrient absorptions. Those are all critical for overall immune health. Like vitamin E, vitamin A, and vitamin D are critical for healthy immune function. So if you have an autoimmune disease, you definitely want to make sure you're, that you can absorb A, D, and K, and these other fat cells. It's so important for immune function um, from the foods you eat. That becomes compromised if you have a gallbladder issue. If you have inflammation, you really want to make sure that the healthy fats you eat from things like olive oil and avocado and fish can actually be produced in the prostaglandins that are anti-inflammatory. Those things can be impacted by having a gallbladder issue. So if it took a long time for you to get diagnosed, your hypothyroid, or if you just are one of those people that says, you know, I don't really need to go on thyroid replacement, I think I'm okay, and you actually have hypothyroidism, you may have a gallstone uh, pattern or a gallbladder sludge develop that can lead to its own to its own issues. So that's the main connection between uh, thyroid hormones and the gallbladder, is that thyroid hormones are necessary to activate smooth muscle contraction of the gallbladder. And in states of thyroid hormone deficiency, gallbladder contractions dramatically go down, which leads to sludge and and gallstones. And that sludge and gallstones in the gallbladder unrelated to obstruction lead to decreased bile, and that decreased bile then leads to inability to break down fats and get fat-soluble vitamins, essential fatty acids, and decreased bile then loses the ability to activate the different receptors in the microbiome that control microbiome physiology, leading to downstream effects of chronic gut issues. So if you have uh, intolerance to fat, and you eat anything greasy and fatty and gets extremely bloated if you take fish oils and you start to burp them up and get distended, you probably have some gallbladder issues and there may be some connections with um, your hypothyroidism. If you go on thyroid hormones, that's great. That can 
help your gallbladder contraction activity, but you may need to then incorporate lifestyle factors to help deal with your gallstones. Anyways, I hope that podcast is, uh, helps connect how hypothyroidism and thyroid function impact your gallbladder, and thank you for listening.